Welcome back, and it's time for our very first hot topic on The Breakfast this morning. We have been joined by Augustine Egger, security expert, and who would also be joined by a legal practitioner, Mr. Johnson Agu, to take a look at the arrest of Mr. Godwin Amirfele, the CBN governor. Uh, good morning to you, Mr. Egger. Good morning. It's my pleasure to be here again this morning. Good. Um, well, this arrest, no doubt, many Nigerians are excited that uh, MFLA has been suspended because many Nigerians are not happy with him for many reasons, especially the Naira redesign thing that affected many people. Uh, from what we heard, some people died in the process because they couldn't access their money to go to the hospital and a whole lot of things that happened with all, all of that. We have other issues that we know that um, may also be questioned as he is being interrogated. The Fadama scheme, the sale of Polaris Bank, alleged financing of IPUB, the Forex fraud, Nara redesign policy and others. However, before we go deeper, let's find out how constitutional or otherwise his suspension and the rest is because we know that, uh, as it stands today, there's an extant court order restraining the DSS, the EFCC, and others from arresting him, and that's given by uh, an Abuja High Court last year. So let's start with that. Uh, thank you. I, the issue of arrest by DSS, DSS. Uh, they profile internal threats in the country. And so they are done with every happening, especially where there are allegations concerning any office. Long before now, he has been under uh, the executive cover uh, from the former, former government. Actually, they have been trailing him and they have been looking for opportunity to get him because there have been a lot of allegations. Uh, of course, those issues you have touched, they are very strong allegations terrorism funding, which is iPod and all of those things. DSS have the information, and I think it's not even a kind, it's an interrogation. An interrogation is when you have closed out on so many facts, and then it's pointing to one uh, man as a hemsman. And so uh, this one now is an interrogation. And of course, we should also remember that uh, the law enforcement, they have legal practitioners there with them. They have, they have the legal unit. Uh, so before they, they go for this kind of arrest, they also know that they have to follow court proceedings. They've done that, and they also obtain executive order to do it. So they are not acting uh, without authority. They are acting with due diligence. Yeah, but um, ne last year, like Maureen pointed out, there was a, a, an order uh, restraining them from, from arresting Emefele. Does it mean... Because the previous government has left, the order also can be vacated just like that. Is that what the security people do? Uh, 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 we, can't, we can't say that. Like last year, before the order was lifted, someone there was a word from somewhere. Remember the DSS, they worked directly with the presidency. And so we have a new government in place, and it has its own agenda. See, one of the things I saw was that uh, they want to do a reform in the financial sector. And of course, there can be no reform without at least uh, backtracking on what has happened in the system, in that particular sector, before you can reform. And so before he is the head man, they can't let him go like that. He has some things. He has occupied that office for more than five years. And so he has a lot to tell them based on the reforms they want to make. It's not just about, we should not look at the, the bad side of it. And uh, he has done this, he has done that. His statements and whatever he have will also help the government to formulate new policies. And I think we should not look at it from the negative point only. There could also be a positive side. But the fact is that if the, the security have taken him, it doesn't mean it is for evil only. It could be for good. Uh, it's, not, well, it, good. it's not about looking at this from a negative side. We are in a democracy. And as I stated before this, many Nigerians are happy that Emifele has been suspended. But we're talking about deepening our democracy and respecting the rule of law. And so we're asking, is this within the law to have him 
arrested because of this um, restraining order that was given last year by a court? Has the DSS gotten a superior court order? Uh, I let us look at it from the point that uh, when issues regarding criminality is being uh, raised, I think the court is there to protect the rule of the rule of law. And when issues of criminality is being raised and alleged and then traced to a particular man, I think in that case, the court also have the reason to allow uh, certainty. He is not being detained. He's not, they are not going to uh, kind of uh, uh, pass the final judgment of a uh, detention. But I know that he is detained to be interrogated. Mm. He's still a suspect. He'll be interrogated. It's an interrogation. We should look at it. It's an interrogation. He's invited for interrogation. That is what they are doing right now. It's based on to what he will say that will lead to another. Uh, so let us just leave it at that. These are interrogations. And the court cannot uh, stop an interrogation. Okay, let's look at, because the office of the CBN of any country is a very powerful and sensitive one. And because the CBN Act does not even empower the president to unilaterally uh, sack such an official, um, do you see the need to have the CBN Act reviewed in, 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 in order to enable the executive to be able to discipline such an officer um, when necessary? Let us also look at that. Uh, the, the CBN office also have a tenure. We've had, uh, I think they have a tenure, and his tenure have, has expired. No, he hasn't. I think he has up to June next year, June 2024, for his tenure to be over. Well, uh, let's look at that. But from the acts, let us also look at, no matter the office you occupy, and when it has to do with a lot of issues that the facts were evident to us. Okay, do, do, do hold your evident. thoughts there, Edgar. Let me acknowledge the presence of our second guest. Mr. Johnson Agu, legal practitioner, has also joined us on this conversation. Good morning to you, Mr. Agu. Good morning. It's my pleasure to be here. All right. So, Mr. Aga, continue with your explanation. Yes. Uh, we, we, what we say is that if there's been so much allegation of corruption, it's not really corruption, criminality, I think we should look at it. It's a, it, the, 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 the financial sector is a very critical sector in the economy. We see what happened early this year, that it was terrible, that people were using money to buy money. That's something I've never heard. I've never heard. I've never experienced. People died in the process. And no one has the right to kill another for his own policy. So we see that, that those policies were not favorable. And uh, they need to really know, the DSS need to really understand. Of course, when they say DSS, of course, they say there's a backbone that want to really know why those policies, why were they formulated, and why was it uh, poorly implemented so that people have to die. Remember, we should, the, the government have right to account for every human life. And since those policies are coming from CBN and are still sitting, there is right. When you are under investigation, when you are under an investigation, you will always be suspended. I want you to also understand that when a person is under, you are holding any position of trust and you are under investigation, you will be suspended at that moment to answer the questions. All right. Thank you so, so you much. Don't add okay. Let, let's, let's call the legal practitioner, Justin Ago. I am here. Help us throw more light to this. How constitutional okay. I, is this? I think I do not um, agree with um, you, or speaker, your guest. It is not correct that every time that there is an investigation, the investigatee or the person subject of investigation will have to be suspended from office. That is not correct. In fact, in fact, if we, it is correct that DSS is the entity doing the investigation, the key strength of DSS is secrecy. The person being investigated does not have to know that he's under investigation so that he can see completely what he is doing without him being aware. You let him carry on his normal day-to-day -day activities, you follow the trail of what he's doing, and you have complete evidence. And in fact, you do not call in somebody uh, uh, arrest somebody if you are doing such high-profile investigation before you conclude it. 
if you arrest people when you have conclusive proof of or near conclusive proof of what they have done wrong so you are asking them to clarify one thing or one thing or the other and if what they have clarified to you does not satisfy you you not charge them with the offense that you have always suspected they were doing in the court so at the point of arrest of an individual you yourself who is arresting the arrester the arresting institution is nearly certain that an offense has been committed you do not have to wait to hear from the accused to know the offense the accused has committed so i uh, uh, this is where i differ from him otherwise the uh, um prosecutorial or investigating authorities in nigeria have right to invite any individual who does not have what we call constitutional immunity from prosecution. When I say constitutional immunity from prosecution, I'm referring to those individuals or officials whom our constitution has conferred with immunity in section 306 of the constitution or whom through other laws, we are, they are expected to be protected in the things they do in their official capacity. So, and such laws that we have, some of them say you should not arrest them while they are still in office. I do not believe that the CBN governor is one of such, but he has a protected tenure. The CBN governor cannot just, uh, we cannot just wake up and change our CBN governor at will. Even if we suspect that he's doing something wrong, there is a procedure to remove him. The constitution says we should address the Senate with his of offense, and the Senate will now agree to the president's proposal to remove him. I'm not saying constitution, that should be CBN Act. So the reason why the CBN Act protected the office of the gov uh, CBN governor is to give stability to that office, to remove it from the absolute control of the whims of po uh, politicians. So that what we Nigerians experience or suspect to have experienced under the regime of President Buhari and God will name me if late, will not occur. The reason, uh, let me put it slightly differently. We are suspecting, or uh, we are seeing that God will name me if late, allowed this uh, Buhari administration to borrow money that Nigeria did not have, what they call ways and means over the statutory, uh, more than the statutory threshold. They should not have borrowed more than 5% of a certain amount, but they borrowed far, far hundreds and uh, hundreds of percent of that amount. We are owing 77 trillion because CBN was printing money. And that is con constitutionally unlawful. That is legally unlawful. The If the CBN governor is truly independent and, and autonomous, he should have been able to say to the President of Nigeria, no, I cannot do such illegality. There is no law backing. In fact, law says I shouldn't do it. So it is because of what the consequences of saying no that we have said, okay, what is the highest consequence that should happen to him? Removal from office and hounding him with security apparatus like the DSS. So the law has now said he cannot be removed at whim. And the law has now said, uh, in the constitution that nobody should be arrested or his liberty detained or you know removed or whatever without due process of the law i do not accept that hounding a mayfully with the dss is within the due process of the law there is a procedure and like you rightly mentioned the dss recognized that the, the they need the court intervention to abridge the fundamental rights of Mr. M.A. Phillips to movement at some time, sometime in the past, and they sought the court's order. And the court asked him, no, if you believe that he has committed an offense, investigate the offense and invite him as somebody who has committed an offense. We haven't been told that M.A. Phillips was invited. What we have just seen is a, a, a fulfillment of the promise of this current president that MFLA will be dealt with when he enters office. So he has simply given directive to, uh, so we believe, to DSS to pick MFLA up immediately after suspension. Mr. So Ago. telling us that MFLA was running from yeah, Mr. Ago. being picked up somewhere else. 
are all, in my view, something to package uh, 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 the necessity to uh, uh, get him in a gestapo style Mr. over and above the provisions of the law. Yes, Mr. That Agu, yeah, before we continue, could you just adjust your framing just a bit? Because we we're, we're not seeing good. That's Can perfect. You see me yes, now? that's perfect. Now, some right. may argue that perhaps the reason why the DSS uh, moved the way they did is that he had, he had not um, honored invitations last year. We he have not been told he was invited. Are you sure? Uh, I haven't house. seen that because we were told that he was uh, um, suspended barely on Friday. So between Friday and uh, and today, there has been no working day. No, he was. So it, it, it is in the news that he was invited last year by uh, the Senate represent. I mean, investigating um, something that had to do Senate. with judgment debt. Senate is a legislative arm of the government. Yeah. Yes, it's within the executive. And so, are so Mr. Mr. Agu, in a nutshell, in a nutshell, in a nutshell, DSS is breaking the law by arresting so, him. If the DSS, if the DSS cannot invite him, I wonder, if he's a public officer, or even if he's a suspended public officer, he still, in quote, has a name to protect. All we should expect is, oh, Mr. Mefile, come to our office on social and so dates. And we should expect okay. that when he comes, VSS will account for his arrival and not a station where hours and hours after he has been taken into custody, we'll be debating where he, 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 who knows his where about. Yes, VSS or somebody else will first tell us that VSS does not have custody of him and let that they will not confirm they have custody of him. So if anything happened within the interval to Mr. Mayfield, they will be denying the uh, knowledge of his whereabouts. That's not proper. So are you of the opinion, Mr. Johnson, Ago, that the President Tinubu should have waited for the 10th Assembly to have been inaugurated so that he could go about this the proper way? He doesn't even need to wait. The, 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 the 9th Assembly that was in power at the time he was sworn in was sufficient to act on the legislative side of the removal process. So he doesn't need to wait. If he was so desperate as to get, I mean, to get rid of Amy Philly on the day of his swearing in, that day he should pass his uh, uh, request to the Na National Assembly. And if they sit and approve it, so be it. That's uh, the way, okay, currently he just signed a law passed by the National Assembly. I mean, the Ninth National Assembly. Uh, uh, the regulating the uh, literacy sector and devolving some more powers to certain entities. Uh, didn't you read that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He passed the constitutional or uh, another law changing the retirement age of judges from 65 to 70 uni to make it uniform across board. So why didn't he wait till the Ninth Assembly passes and the Tenth Assembly come and pass those laws before he signs them? It is the same constitutional responsibility, whether you call it the Ninth Assembly or the Tenth Assembly. It is the same constitutional responsibility, whether you call it the 15th president or the 16th president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The president of Nigeria is the president of Nigeria. The National Assembly is National Assembly. Each entity has to do its job. Which means the president has started off by breaking the law, too. Clearly. There are no two words about it. Hmm. Interesting. And this this is giving us a fourth test of what to expect. Should we expect le uh, legalism, rule of law? It, 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 the way he handled the former uh, Sosni Wahala has also shown us that we are not expecting a president that is compliant with the rule of law. He oh. prefers uh, 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 showmanship. All right, Edgar. Yes. He's coming here. Response. How do you respond to the explanation given by the legal practitioner who has made it clear that President Tinubu has gone against the rule of law in the way that Emir Fale has been arrested and suspended too? Well, he is a legal practitioner in his own area, but we in the security aspect, we see our things different. He's talking from his own perspective, but in our own area, uh, when we see that there's certain allegations of uh, criminality, Remember, DSS, their internal threat is like funding of iPod. It's a very serious issue that um, they, re they really need to know. 
they have to find out more. And uh, he's saying that uh, he was arrested. What of if DSS have consistently uh, invited him and he refused to come? There's a way some of these public officers, they behave based on the immunity they have over their offices. Uh, when they are there, you know, sometimes they don't show regard to law enforcement. We know so much about that. And sometimes some of them, they end up with this kind of brute force, uh, which you see DSS uh, doing this show. Uh, they may have, they may have, you know, because these things, like he's saying that they, they should have uh, discreetly investigated the Mephili. But I tell you, before the DSS will call you, of the, I say when they will narrow down whatever they are doing to interrogation, that means they have a lot of facts that it has to answer, uh, to answer to it. It's not only DSS, they have all the intelligence community in Nigeria working hand in hand. They share intelligence. And so when they narrow down and come after you, they have a lot to say. So let us not see that it's just a public thing. They may have been inviting him uh, 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 in, in the quiet to come for some uh, certain questioning. And of course, this is where they make big money, they become big, they don't respect uh, the law, especially when they're talking to Mr. President. But now probably they have another president, not uh, uh, Mr. Buhari. So let us uh, look at it from that. That's where I have my own basis. Security will look at things different from the national security and national threats. Things that can lead to complete breakdown of law and order in Nigeria, even a war situation. That is how security see their things. From the legal aspect, they look at uh, they protect human rights. We know that. And so these are two things that we see. But I want to tell you that in the security perspective, we always consider legality. Legality is a very, very critical thing before you... you a technical glitch going on there. We hope it does not continue so that we can have uh, this conversation um, get to a very logical conclusion. Mm -hmm. Mr. Edgar, can you hear us now? Okay, Mr. Johnson. Yeah, I'm here. All right, so obviously there is a need for security agencies to understand uh, the fact that in as much as they need to do their job, that there is a need to protect the democracy that we are cherishing right now. Do you see that there's, there's a, uh, there appears to be some sort of disconnect uh, between the security agencies and the way things should be done? Legally. Clearly, clearly. It seems our security officials have not understood that rule of law is an aspect of security. Because if you begin to do things just because you've got the powers to do them, other people will also take up uh, on themselves to defend themselves because they have powers to defend themselves. So it, it will not boil down to who has superior powers. And let us be honest. What we are calling power or throne or asherog or whatever only gives us an illusion of power. We really need the support of every human being in the country to ha actually have powers. Let, let me cut in there. Let, Mr. Agu, let me, let me just cut in there. Sorry. Um, what is the place of law, as in the rule of law, the legal aspect of things, when it comes to national security? They both work hand in gloves. You cannot have national security without rule of law. In fact, without rule of law, you are inviting anarchy. The, let me put it this way. Let me start this from the basis. The concept of national security is that all of us, you, the uh, uh, anchor persons, me, and the security expert that you have invited, and every other member of the society are imbued with the right to protect ourselves and pursue our own welfare the way we want it. But we have notionally agreed to submit some aspects of our rights to a central organ, a central body we are calling government, to regulate how we will pursue our individual happiness and safety. And the condition is that that central organ we are calling government will exercise the rights we have given to it responsibly and in, in fairly so that any day the central organ begins to abuse the collective privilege we have all donated to it we are in, imbued with a right to resume our individual rights to protect ourselves and uh, pursue our welfare that is the basic jurisprudence okay now that this has happened this way does 
a mefile have any kind of or what uh, legal uh, redress options does it have? Because there is also the 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 the, the, uh, the right of the office of the citizen, so to speak. Security and welfare of the people. So anytime it exercises it in such a way that the people and wealth, uh, 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 the people is supposed to be secured and seeking their welfare, begin to feel that there is the, the government is alienated. Johnson, I think I think you didn't people. hear me. Yeah, I'm asking because I'm rem I'm remembering what happened in the course of if individual who can muster any form of force might be tempted to start securing himself, even against the so-called government. All right, Johnson, do you see Sanusi? I beg your pardon. That is, risk, and that is why we are insisting that the government must do its own functions within the rule of law. Yeah, do you see Emir Fele? Do you see Emir Fele fighting this legally? I do remember the time of Jonathan when Sanusi was suspended. He went to court. He went uh, to well, court. I do don't you know see? The legal advice that uh, Emir Fele has received. I do not have the entire facts. What I'm only speaking to is what is in the public domain. So if MFLA has been advised, it's possible that he will seek legal ad, um, assistance. And um, there is room for the courts to declare his rights. DSS has have their role. I think there has been a case that was decided between DSS and Abakoba on this kind of issues. So uh, DSS have their roles. I do, if truly MFLA was corrupt or all of those kind of stuff, those things can be within the purview of the police. DSS is merely secret intelligence gathering. And if there is really, really national security threat, they have a way, they have their means. They don't have to look like lackeys or politicians. Well, thank you so much, Johnson Argo and Mr. Augustine Eka. Both of you have been so uh, amazing in your analysis this morning over this matter. We'll continue to see how it unfolds. We also understand that uh, the DSS may be seeking an uh, order to extend a Mephiles time with them. I don't know whether to use detention now yeah, or time the with them. That's the word they used, detention. detention mm -hmm. uh, with them for further questioning. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time this morning on the bre breakfast. Thank My you. pleasure. Thank you. Okay. My All right, so there you have it. We've had our very first hot topic. And from there, we'll move over to sports. We'll be joining you in a moment. Stay with us for that. <laughs>